Welcome back to the swamp my friends and welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and downright strange stories from graveyards and cemeteries alike. These stories were sent in by viewers just like you and they claim that these stories are true. Now as always take them with just a little bit of salt you can never really be too sure. Nonetheless these stories are absolutely fascinating and they have a heavy paranormal element to them. Now, I myself have definitely experienced some weird feelings in graveyards. I've not seen anything too wild outside of being chased by some homeless people one time, but that's a story for another video. As always, if you have a story that you'd like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and get ready for this creepy and downright strange episode of Graveyard Horror Stories. Deep South Graveyard Spookiness by John G. The thick, humid air of the Deep South hung heavy around me as I cautiously pushed open the creaking gates of the abandoned graveyard. The moon cast a sickly pallor over the twisted branches of the ancient oaks that surrounded the cemetery, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I had been drawn to this lonely place by rumors and whispers, tales of strange happenings and unexplained disappearances, but as I stepped further into the graveyard, the sense of foreboding grew stronger, prickling at the back of my neck like icy fingers. The ground beneath my feet was uneven and littered with fallen leaves, obscuring the worn paths that were wounding their way around these crumbling headstones. I moved cautiously, my sense on high alert, looking for any sign of danger. As I wandered deeper into the graveyard, the silence became oppressive, broken only by distant hoots of an owl or the rustle of leaves in the wind. The shadows seemed to dance and shift around me, playing tricks on my mind and distorting my perception of reality. I reached out to touch one of the headstones, the cold stone sending a shiver down my spine. The inscription was worn and faded, barely legible after years of neglect. It felt like a silent testament to the forgotten souls beneath the earth, their names lost to time. Suddenly, a chill swept through the graveyard. It was like a gust of wind, if you will, like somebody had blown through here. Sending a shiver down my spine once more, I wrapped my arms around myself trying to comfort myself and ward away any cold that was seeping into my bones. Then, from the darkness emerged a figure, tall and gaunt, its features obscured by shadows. I froze, my heart pounding as I watched it draw closer, its movement slow and deliberate. I tried to call out, to ask who or what it was, but my voice was caught in my throat, choked off by fear. The figure drew closer until I could see its eyes, cold and empty, devoid of any hint of humanity. And then it spoke, a voice like gravel, harsh and rasping. It spoke of death and despair, of souls trapped in eternal torment. It told of the curse that had been befallen on this place condemning all who dared to trespass within its boundaries. I stumbled backward, my mind reeling with the terror as I realized the truth of what lay before me. This was no ordinary graveyard. This was a prison, a place of darkness and despair where the dead refused to rest. With a cry of fear, I turned and ran, my footsteps echoing off in crumbling headstones as I fled through the darkness. But no matter how fast I ran, the graveyard stretched endlessly its twisted paths leading me deeper into its heart. And then, just when I thought I could run no further, I stumbled upon a mausoleum, its doors hanging open, inviting me inside with nowhere else to turn. I ducked inside, hoping to find refuge from whatever lurked outside. But as I huddled in the darkness of the mausoleum, the whispers grew louder, the words becoming more apparent with each passing moment. They spoke of hunger, pain, and a thirst for vengeance that could never be sated. As I listened, I realized I was not the first to seek the shelter of this cursed place, and I feared I would not be the last. 
or in the depths of the cold old abandoned graveyard in the deep south. Some things should never be disturbed, things that hunger for the souls of the living, and as I cowered in the darkness, I knew I would potentially never escape the horrors of what lurked within. Luckily, I was able to find my way out in the morning, first light, ran my way home, and have never looked back since. If I was a skeptic of the paranormal or anything otherworldly before this experience, I am now a full-fledged believer. This 1700s graveyard is haunted by Anonymous. Two years ago, two friends and I decided to go on a late night adventure and drive to a bigger city about an hour away from our hometown. We got to the town around 11 p.m. and explored random areas. I had my iPhone plugged into the car to play music, and out of nowhere, the music cut out and the screen changes to the maps. Fast forward to a few days ago, when one of my friends that was with me was talking to me on the phone. He brought up the experience, and we decided to look into it. We found the two roads on Google Earth, and could see a house in a forest with a clearing around it. We researched the house and found a court document connected to the address. Developers had bought the land and were denied approval to build on the land where the house stood. I didn't really think much of it until I read why they were dismissed. The clearing on Google Earth was a cemetery where the city's original settlers were buried. After some more research, we found out that a man who had owned the land sometime before the 1990s had moved every single headstone, leaving the graves unmarked. It took historians many years to discover the cemetery, and they were granted permission to report it thoroughly. They found 99 grave sites, but 60 were much smaller, meaning they probably belonged to children. The developers had unveiled in court that they would simply move the remains into a corner of a new subdivision without any ceremony. The other road we were brought to was on the other side of the forest, as if it wanted us to drive through from the other side when we didn't take the main road. The weirdest part about this experience was when we noticed the court date was precisely 10 years ago from when we did our research, we found it odd and it took us a long time to look into what the GPS could have been doing. Like, how did it malfunction? How did it automatically take us there? It's, it literally took us out from the directions we had and put in these new directions by itself. On the 10th anniversary of this case, I honestly believe that our GPS was being manipulated by a spirit that belonged to the graveyard, and they wanted us to know what happened there. I work as a cemetery security guard by Background T. So, I recently started a security job for the graveyard shift. The building was 12 floors, roof access, and two parking garages for reference. No one but my partner and I supposed to be in the building overnight. Also, you need a key card to use the elevator or get into the stairwell doors. Anyway, the first night, one of the motion-activated toilets went off when no one was near it. We had to do a bathroom patrol and it happened right when we opened the door. The whole floor was vacant after we did our sweep. I was doing a patrol from the 12th floor mechanical room just about a week ago. As I left the room and entered the stairwell, the rooftop door was rattled and slightly banged on. I ran up there and there was absolutely nothing. I assumed it might have just been a bird or some wind. I started my way down and then the 11th floor door started jiggling the same way. I jogged down because it was my job and I had to get there anyway. I swiped my key, but there was absolutely no one there yet again. It was quiet besides toilets and walkie-talkies that went off when we weren't touching them. Last night I was doing bathroom patrol at 4am, listening to my music in one ear. I get to the 11th floor and start to hear footsteps behind me. I pull out the headphones while turning around, preparing to tell them to get out. Yet again, no one is there, but as those footsteps stopped, heavy footsteps were on the floor above me. They stopped above me when I figured out where they came from. After I got out of that floor, into the stairwell and shut the door, I heard it sound like it was trying to open, but it wasn't moving. There isn't any wind inside the building, and nothing appears on the security cameras. I might record it tonight, if I'm still determined that I can do that, 
Sorry for the long story. I just wanted to make sure I got all these details out there. Working in a cemetery like this can be strange. Usually, you don't have cemeteries inside buildings. But for a little bit of extra context, because I don't think I explained this well enough, this is an indoor facility that holds ashes of people. So we have people from war vets to just normal people to all kinds of things. And I think the energy in here is just strange. Old Cemetery Hauntings by Rainer G. I've always looked to the paranormal side of things to be mostly plausible. However, I've experienced things here and there since I was a kid that I'm confident can't be explained by science or illusion, but only as something otherworldly. Although nothing I've experienced has ever been necessarily disturbing, they have given me a lot to think about. One of these was the most personal and long-lasting experiences I've ever had, and this took place in May of 2014. Just as some background context, I live in Central Florida. Since it is a very touristy state, of course, towns and other areas like to try and brush over the dark history and even erase it by building over top of it, trying to rewrite the narrative around it to be harmless and seemingly squeaky clean. In reality, Florida is the most southern state you can get. The clan, manifest destiny, civil war battles and skirmishes, Native American tribe displacement and eradication, well... I guess you could say attempted eradication because obviously the Seminoles are the only unconquered people, but I digress. If you ask the right people, some of the popular tourist attractions around me will tell you the truth about the atrocities there. So yes, it's likely that most of this state has some activity. At the time, I was in the 7th grade and throughout the year, I had heard about my friend Bryce who lived out on the beach in a four-story house. He had the entire attic and top floor to himself. The beach would be another 250 yards out from his house, and next to his house was an empty lot followed by an old graveyard, then apartments and housing. The headstones mostly faced towards the beach, but its entrance was towards the street behind it. I believe this graveyard was one of two things, but I can't remember for sure. It was either formerly a slave graveyard from Civil War times that turned into a segregated graveyard until the 1900s, somewhere between 1900 and 1909, or a Native American graveyard from the displacement projects or wars in the 1810s to 1850. I'm leading towards the latter though, because I've never been able to find out more about this graveyard. Bryce had told me about one night he couldn't sleep or something of the sort, and he looked out his window into the pitch black night to see a set of blue, glowing eyes looking at him from the graveyard. I would like to know what time of night it was. This had likely happened because the graveyard was in the process of being built over. They were laying foundations and uprooting the graves. They were just removing the headstones for most of it though. They weren't even actually taking the bodies or the bones and moving them, just the stones. Bryce was also a bit naive, but I never got the impression from him that he'd lie about something like this. I was intrigued and wanted to see it for myself. I finally got my chance on May 14th of 2014 on the last day of actual non-exam filled school. When we went on a field trip to a local theme park and ended the day having a party on the beach at Bryce's house, during this party I made sure to get him to take me over to the side so I could go see it. He left me for a while. I looked at it and took out my four emergencies hand-me-down phone and took some pictures as I had seen others do online. I truly regret to this day trespassing onto it and looking at these gravestones remaining. But my 13-year-old self didn't think that nothing could happen, you know? During the time I was taking these pictures, I did notice some people walking by on the street. But I'm sure no one was there by the time I took the pictures and left. I didn't see anyone at the time and went about the party. But when I got home and looked over the pictures, I found that there were three pictures that I took that clearly had a couple of people in them standing near the front of the gates. From the lower quality images, I could just barely make out what, that they looked like Native Americans. They were definitely from the Seminole tribe, which was the leading band of Native Americans who fought during those years previously stated in the beginning of the story. I always planned to move those pictures to a different phone over the last 8 years, but only a few weeks ago, back in November, did I remember about these at all. I guess I had deleted these pictures or lost them some time along the way, and of course I know this cliche, but just know they weren't anything special, but I had a weird and genuine strange experience in a graveyard.
The Cemetery Stalker by E. Double Addict. I've been friends with this guy named Ryan for about eight years now. We met in the fourth grade. We just finished our junior year of high school. He and I have been big fans of random walks, you know, just taking walks and hikes into random areas. We've been doing it for a couple of years now, during the winter, spring, summer, and fall. Safe to say we love taking walks. He lives a few blocks away from a cemetery, and usually we go straight two blocks to get there and take a right down a hill. There's this bridge that we have to cross, then there's the cemetery. It's located on a large hill, so it's pretty visible if you're there. We grew distant during our 8th grade year and didn't hang out very much. I became the popular kid, which was shocking since I have always been an introvert. But anyway, I digress. The point I'm making is we only went on a few walks together that year. As a stroke with luck would have it, we would rekindle our friendship the first year COVID hit. We hung out more and more and talked a lot. We started walking to the cemetery and noticed this yellow sports car was always parked there. We didn't really think much of it. Maybe someone was grieving. It's a cemetery after all. We continued walking there and the yellow car was at the same spot every single time we went. The lights were always turned off. It just sat there for hours at a time. Again, we didn't really think much of it, I guess. After becoming a little more distant my sophomore year, we began hanging out more during the beginning of our junior year. We went to the cemetery like usual, and there was that same yellow car as always. It was just there doing nothing. We both knew it wasn't a worker since the vehicle was parked in the middle of the path he would drive through, not like at a parking lot or on the side of the road or anything, but we still carried on. Fast forward to May of 2022, we were just about to finish our junior year. We went to the cemetery sometime around 9 p.m. Since I got a job at a pizza place in January, I always worked from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. every weekday except Thursday. We walked like usual, talking about true crime, how dry our love lives are, and the movies that were coming out soon. This time, however, we noticed the car wasn't there. The cemetery has a lot of hills and stretches out, maybe a few thousand grays with still more room to go. You have to walk up a mountain to get to the main area, actually, and most of the graveyard is still not visible because of the hills. We continue walking to where the car usually parks since we've never actually been there. We continue talking about our lives and just silly nonsense when we noticed a car driving in the path. We didn't think much of it, again, this is a place of grieving, but we saw that it was yellow. When it came close to us, the same type of headlight, same license plate, it was dark then, so we had to rely on our flashlights on our phones to see around. We got a little freaked out but carried on. We walked until the yellow car stopped at its usual place. We stopped roughly 30 feet away from the vehicle for a second with our flashlights on. We heard the door open and footsteps approaching us. We gasped and shut off our phones. We bolted away. We were faster than whoever that was, but we knew they were running after us. I asked Ryan in a whisper, if he had brought any pepper spray, and of course he wouldn't bring it the one time we would need it. We hid behind big gravestones for a couple of minutes waiting to see if they would run past, but they never did. They must have given up. We waited another couple of minutes, bolted out of the cemetery entirely out of breath, and never looked back. We joked about it a little since before we went into the graveyard we said, imagine if something terrifying would happen, and speak of the devil. What would have happened to us if they had caught us? What would they have done to us? I don't know. I'm just glad that we took extreme caution when we saw that car. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be here to write this. Living Across from a Cemetery by Pam M. Hey Swamp Dweller, my name is Pam and I'm from North Mississippi. I have a paranormal story to share for you. It's not the most scary, but it's actually kind of creepy. Sometimes, though, when I think back on it, it gives me a good laugh. Anyway, I used to live beside an old cemetery when I was a child. Some of these graves were from the 1800s, and they were pretty cool. My house was across the street from the cemetery, and my family and I experienced many events during the 12 years we lived there. We witnessed a large orange gaseous ball roll out of the cemetery gates and down the street before dissipating. We did learn that many people would see these strange gases rising from the cemetery. It was scary and weird. 
Also, when returning from dates, my sister would frequently see a man standing beside our house. But when my father would go out and check, there would never be anyone there, and there was never and there was never any sort of footsteps or any sign that somebody had been standing or walking around the house at all. There were also many nights that the garage door would shake and rattle to the point that it seemed whoever was trying to get into the house would rip the door off the hinges. Again, my dad would go outside and never see a thing. He'd even try slipping around the back of the house in complete darkness, being super quiet to try to sneak up on anybody who may be there. But when my dad would enter the garage, it would go entirely quiet, and there was never a single soul around. Every night, my mom would lay my clothes out for school, but occasionally, I'd have one shoe missing. Everything would be precise as my mother left it the night before, except for that one shoe. We would always find it in the most strange of places. We knew none of us would put it in those areas because most of the time none of us could even reach it. But let me get to the funny story, I guess. First, I have to give you a bit of setup. My mom and dad had some great friends who had kids the same age as my sister and me. All their kids had children around our ages, so my dad fixed us a playroom in the basement with all kinds of fun stuff for us kids to do. So one night, while our parents were in the kitchen playing cards, Four of us kids were in the basement watching TV, playing on the racetrack or something. This was around 1970, so we didn't have video games, so watching TV or listening to the records was the main activity. It was common knowledge that weird things happened in our house, and we kids were sitting around talking about it. The oldest of the kids was a boy. I'll call him D. D was probably around 15 or 16 years old, and he was the group leader. He was the oldest, and he was the only boy. His sister Mela, who was 14, was there. My sister, who was 13, and myself, who was 8, were telling some of the strange things that had gone on around the house when we all began to hear knocking outside. It sounded like someone was forcefully knocking on the screen door that went into the basement from outside. We told my dad, and he checked it out, and you guessed it. Nothing. So D, being the big bad boy of our group, flopped down in the chair and stated that he was not scared. He said that he didn't believe in ghosts. He then uttered taunting words as if he was speaking to a spirit, but what he said wasn't very nice. Now, I can't recall his exact words, but I remember his sister saying that he'd better hope there's no ghost after all what he said. He then stated that he still would not be scared if someone flung open the door right now. Well, guess what happened? About two seconds after, both the basement door and the door to the house flung open at the same time. Now the screen door pulled out and the wood door pushed in, so there had to be two opposite motions for this to happen, and they were both locked. For them to fly open with such force just didn't make any sense. The force was so great both doors nearly came off the hinges. That screen door bent in a weird way, and it never was normal after that, and the doorknob from the wood door was pushed so hard it left a hole in the sheetrock of the wall. So now, there were four of us kids, three girls ages 8 to 15, and one boy, 16. Big Strong D knocked all three of us out of his way, running out of that room. He was so terrified that he shoved me, my sister, and his sister into a wall to get by us as we all jumped up and ran to our parents. When I got to my dad, D was in his mother's lap, and D was a big old Mississippi boy. That boy, who wasn't scared of ghosts, crawled into his mother's lap quickly after those doors slammed open. We never really figured out what happened. But D never again said he didn't believe and never again taunted Ghost. I don't know what was wrong with that house. I have to assume living next to a cemetery caused a lot of weird energy to go down. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true and downright strange graveyard and cemetery horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. As always, if you enjoyed these stories, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes and that's incredibly helpful to the swamp to grow its ever-expanding waters. If you're new, why not join us? Subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. I upload brand new videos multiple times a week and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you'd like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. 
You can also submit them on Reddit at r slash the dark swamp. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp, and stories like yours help keep this show going on a daily basis. I'd love to know in the comments down below what story was your favorite tonight. It helps me pick better stories and I love seeing your reviews. If you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but would like to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Swamp the way you do. I couldn't do this on a daily basis. I know this topic probably won't be as popular among viewers, so if you made it to the end and would like to support this video just a little bit more, be sure to comment down below the code word Blue Wave Form. That way, it helps the algorithm push this video just a little bit more, supports the swamp, and we can confuse anybody who doesn't make it to the end. As always, the funniest comment will be pinned at the top. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode.